Lord for that rock. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Glory. Amen. I hope you're under great anticipation, excited, ready for something to take place. Who's ready for something to take place? Oh, it's got to happen. It's got to happen now. It just did. Hey. How wonderful when the bride gets together something's fixing to take place and he started this whole service thousands of years ago he was planning it predestinated it knew we were going to be here but already started putting things in order and now it just dovetails it comes together here we are sitting together in heavenly places the bride of Jesus Christ oh praise the name of the Lord thank the Lord and we want to welcome everybody that's here how many visitors do we have very many visitors today well, God bless you all and welcome here and everybody that's on the telephone hookup around the world that are listening in today. We're glad to have you part of us. That's part of the bride from around the world. You are all who I believe to be the original spoken word royal seed of God. Ah. Because you stayed with the original word, yeah. which we believe yes. is this message. Yeah. Ah, that's what brings us all here together. Oh, what an exciting day. Did you enjoy last Sunday? The spoken word is the original seed. fellowship about that all day long Amen. but what's so great there's more coming Amen. I was telling brother Samuel about that it's like man you want to read quotes out of that it's like we'd be here all day let's just play that again Amen. I mean six hours do you realize how much we missed I know how much he give me I know how much he give you it was a totally wonderful experience of the Lord I believe God spoke that message through his prophet and had it recorded knowing that we would hear it in our home tape churches on that very day. Amen. He knew it, making it his word being fulfilled in us. Amen. If he knew it, he said it, predestinated it, said get it home and listen to the tapes. That's what we've done. I don't know if it's ever been done by a church around the world. I don't think so. But we did last Sunday. So that's that scripture. That's that word being fulfilled. And we we're part of it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. exciting being God's program Amen. what God wants what he's doing and see this the living word living in his living bride being fulfilled before our very eyes to be part of it Amen. if Jesus was here you better believe it, I'd be Jesus disciple Amen. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ through this messenger Amen. 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 Amen now some people they just don't quite understand the home tape churches. I don't know if you'd run into that, but they certainly don't understand. But we know because it has changed our lives and our family's lives. Amen. There's been a change that's happened to us. And not only that, but do you realize that it is God training his bride? Amen. He's training us. God don't do nothing haphazardly. He does it perfect. And if you are a member of the bride of Jesus Christ, you too one day will have home tape church. Oh, it's wonderful.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So how important then, if that is, are our home tape services? Let's hear what he had to say and what's going to take place. I know you heard it. You heard it last week. I had to pull out a couple of nuggets from there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What a message Amen. to know that I'm part of that original seed. Amen. I've not been impregnated with nothing but this word. Amen. And I'm impregnated with it. Now, I believe with all my heart that that's the way it will wind up. There will be like a union, a boycott, right. and all such places as this here will be closed down at the tabernacle he's talking about. And you'll not be able to speak unless you got a permission or a license from this federation of churches to hold a service. He said that's going to take place. So they will close the church. They will close all churches that don't come under that federation of churches that doesn't, as he told us before, that ecumenical council. It's done in the works. It's been going on for a long time. But God's holding it back. He's not letting it take place yet. We're going to get into that. Praise the name of the Lord. So the bride, they won't be able to have services in the traditional way of churches and in buildings and places like that. But we'll still be having church. still be united together united around the world around this word so the ride if they can't do it we can we will know and we won't miss one service it ain't gonna affect us at all will we long to be together absolutely we'll long to be together but there's one thing that brings us together this word. Amen. And I don't believe when that takes place, it won't be long before we have the coming of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So bring it on. Amen. Okay. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I heard one of the presidents that they had asked him, my old GBTs or whatever they are, and they asked him, he says, about closing down churches and stuff. I don't know if you all heard that or not. And it's like, man, what a shame what they come in. When the first order of service, they ask if they don't believe in the LGBT and all that, that all nonprofit churches and organizations will be closed down if they don't. And he goes, that will be one of my first order of business. It's like, elect that dude. <laughs> him out put him in <laughs> you know what I mean by that because it'll bring the coming of the Lord and it'll happen so quick and they all think that way but God's got a time he's got a plan and that's what he told us and spoken word is the original seed God had a plan everybody just gets a little bit anxious about it remember there will be such a denominational gathering pretty soon it'll be terrific and they will bring themselves together into this federation of churches. And then this kind of church will be put out of operation as far as they know. Yes. We'll still be having church.
as far as they know, he seen and knew that this was going to be happening. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. When is this going to take place? Very, very soon. How do you know that, Brother Joseph? He told us last Sunday what was going to happen. He told us when it was going to take place. Did you guys catch it? Nobody's going to raise their hand? Come on. He said, when the spirit falls and there becomes a move amongst the people, the church of God will be ousted. The spirit's falling and there's a move amongst the people. It's coming. It's happening right now. You're witnessing it right now, what he was talking about. Praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated. I love that. When the Spirit falls and becomes a move amongst the people. We're living in that time, this very time. The Spirit is now falling. And we see the moving of the Holy Spirit within the bride of Jesus Christ, recognizing exactly who we are and that the time that we're living in, there's never been a time like this. It wasn't for back there. The same thing in the time. Brother Branham thought then, and this is it. He doesn't see nothing that's hindering it. But God had a time and a plan. Amen. Thank God for that. So it's important to have our home tape, tape churches. When the rest of the churches who don't know what to do, we do. Because that we've been in training. And when it happens, we won't lose our church or our pastor. himself said exactly how and what we believe you know it's so wonderful when we do things like for lifeline or we put a blog on or do something to try to encourage you or something that we do and the brothers do such a wonderful wonderful job to say even they do it's a blessing Sorry, you can see this. Sorry, I don't want you to see me shaking so bad. I get scared when I get up here before you. You're the bride of Jesus Christ. There's nothing greater. I am a bride of Jesus Christ. But I get scared when I get up here before you. You're the purchase of that blood. I was battling that so hard this week. I said, Lord, but I know one thing. It might not be the way I say it or can articulate it, but I know what I'm doing and pointing you to this message is the truth. Amen. You may be seated. But my point being is when they do something, when they add a quote or they do put Brother Branham on there, it instantly turns into the best thing they ever did. Amen. And whenever we need something, it's best when the prophet says it. And then we can quote exactly his words. Amen. I love this. That's the reason I believe in this message. That sounds just like us already, don't it? <laughs> right there. It's because it comes from the word of God. Amen. Still sounds like us. And anything outside the word of God, I don't believe it. Listen to what he says. It could be so. It could be. But I'll just stay with what God said. Then be sure that I'm right. That's what we're doing. It could be so what somebody else says, what somebody else does. But we're going to stick with this message, with the word, with the tapes. And then we'll know that we're right. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 
That is the only way that we know to be absolutely, unequivocally sure. God spoke lip to ear to his prophet. The very thoughts of God were recorded and placed on tape for us to hear. Think of that. The very thoughts of God. He told us last week, he said, those prophets back in, he said, they stayed in the presence of the Lord all the time with their pencil in their hand, ready to write into doing it. This God, this God, this time through this messenger, this prophet stayed in tune and he came out and just come right out of his lips. And it was recorded. God's prophet spoke it. It was interpreting the very word of God. Interpreting. The very word of God. Amen. The Bible. He was interpreting the Bible. Amen. As Brother G said, you with me? Amen. Okay. Do you believe that? Amen. Let's see what he has to say about that. See if he confirms that. And now, my brothers, now, when I say that, I mean I'm not this little group here this morning, but I'm meaning where these tapes will be sent around the world. So he's telling you around the world, you sitting here in this tabernacle, everybody around the world, pay attention. I'm getting ready to say something here. Amen. I wish you would bear with me a little while and think of that, that there's got to be some place come for a judgment. God's got to have a place for judgment. Then some of them say the King James Version of the Bible. Others say another version of the Bible. And now they're making a standard version and then something else. So there's this Bible and that Bible and this Bible and that Bible. I believe if God be the sovereign God, and he is the eternal one, he has to see it. It's up to him. If I want to go to heaven, to his place, it's up to him to furnish me a place where I know what to do. Somewhere that I can lay your hands on and say, this is it. That's this message. This is it. This message. Praise the name of the Lord. God speaking through human lips, interpreting his word. There is nothing else is to say we do say it's the Bible. It's our absolute. But you miss the whole message. The God's prophet is the divine interpreter to God's word. He promised that he would come in St. John 16. He says, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. But I will come again. It will be me in human flesh revealing and interpreting to you, the bride of Jesus Christ, my words, the Bible. So he is his own and it needs no interpretation. So it is a living Bible that we can hear. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. No, 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 no. You say a quote, you can't already help. It's like, praise the Lord. Now we've had the teaching rain. Oh, wasn't that beautiful way Brother Brandon put that together? When body said, well, we've already had a rain. He goes, just a minute, I'll get to that. Uh, prophet under control, the word coming forth. And we're already now for the harvest rain, 1962. You know, the first rain is when you plant the seed. That starts your crops are growing. Then just before it matures, there comes another crop. That's what they call the harvest rain. We know when it is. The spring rains and then the rains about June. It makes our crops. And now the rain we find out is the spirit. Now, so after the rains, he says, is the seed is planted. The first rains, he told us it was planted. And he says, then comes that harvest rain in June. That's a harvest rain, not harvest time. But now is harvest time. This is late in August, September, October. We're getting ready for the combines are coming. But he had to wait. He had a program to sit in the presence of the sun and ripen, he said. 
That first rain came when it was planted. Then it came and he poured out all the messages and it came up. But now the seed, he said another seed is coming forth. The bride seed is coming forth. Setting in the presence of the sun, ripening. And that can only be done one way. I hear in this message. I'm taking my time so that the tapes give the people time to study. Amen. I don't want to be in any hurry. I want to just take my time. I don't know what will happen from here on. But I want this to be, I want this to the people. That even though someday God may take me from the world, if I don't live to see his coming, the message will still live on. Stay with the word. That's what we're doing. Praise the Lord. He told us Sunday from the beginning that Satan had a different way. He had a different plan than God had. He said it was a different way. And Eve opened up, he said, the womb of her mind. He said there's where it took place, in the womb of her mind. And she got impregnated in her mind with that word. And he says, with what? With doubt, with reasoning. And with the devil's plan, it came inside of her mind. She couldn't wait for God's great plan. She had to do something herself. Is that what he said? Amen. said she had to do something herself. said it was all there. She was and everything. Jesus was supposed to be brought forth. But he reasoned and said, surely not. And to do this, she started doubting and stuff. So she was already said, Tom Adam, come to her. She had already been impregnated by Satan. She had a better plan. Satan had a different plan. He had a different idea. She had to do something. Then along came Adam, Abraham, and Sarah. Now Sarah, he said, was the church. She started reasoning. She started reasoning in her mind. It has to happen, but I got to do something because it hasn't happened. I've been waiting and I've been waiting and I've been waiting, but it hasn't happened. I've got to bring it to pass. I've got to make it to happen. It's just too much of a phenomenon for me. I, I've got to do something. She couldn't wait for the promised son to come the way God said it was going to come. To come the way God promised that it was going to. But she wanted to do it her way. And her way was through Hagar. She said, come this way. She was supposed to wait, but she didn't. And he said, what did it produce? He said, a wild man. Amen. He says that it produced that wild man that could never be tamed. It's the same thing today. Amen. Some believe they've got to do something to bring the promised bride into perfection. And they're right. They do have something to do. Point the bride to the tapes and press play. That's what they got to do. That's the very purpose of the ministry, is to point it back to this original seed. That is the only thing that will produce the original word, is the original word that's on the tapes. That's the only thing that can produce this bride for one word, for it is all the very each and every word. We believe it to be the word of God. God interpreting his own word, which we believe is, thus saith the Lord. At the beginning of the seals, I'm about done. And seals in Revelations 10, the full word is to be born into manifestation again. Amen. Oh, that's powerful. And vindicate by the Spirit of God in the full strength as it was when He was here on earth. Manifested in the same way. Doing the same things that He did when He was here on earth. Which is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said manifested the same way. God speaking through flesh. And we have it on the tapes. And it just don't get better than that. Amen. 
So God, in his infant mind, that he knew that he was coming again to speak, as he said, you got many things to tell you, but you don't understand. He says, but I'll come, and it's written, but I'll come speak through a prophet and reveal it to you, what it means. He can take from this Bible, that Bible, this Bible, this Bible, that Bible, and say, even himself, the King James, well, the real word for this, or this is a better understanding for that. Amen. That's interpreting the word. By listening to that will produce a virgin word bride. Virgin, I hear nothing else. That's it. It's that. Not touched, he said, by denominations. Not touched or manhandled. Thus, we become that manifested virgin word bride. We're eagles. He said we're eagles. Living in an eagle age. And we cannot compromise on one word. This is our stand. That's what he told us in spoken word is the original seed. That bride can't compromise. It doesn't matter how it looks, how it seems, what you want to do. We can only eat this fresh manna. For we believe that's what it is. It's fresh manna, fresh revelation coming to us. Others get it a different way. They have a different way of getting it. And that's perfectly fine. That's their leading. That's what they feel. But for us, this message is a full seven course meal. The seven church ages, the seven seals, serpent seed, the Godhead, the token, the absolute. Each message telling us we are the bride of Jesus Christ. It needs no interpretation. It needs nothing else. We can't do nothing else. It's not in our DNA to do nothing else. For this is bride food and we're living in the bride time. We're done. This mess. remain standing it's so wonderful that we can join ourselves together to hear this word don't have to worry don't have to question sure it's the anointed word sure that I can repeat a quote but there's nothing greater than sitting underneath the anointing of this message spoken by the son of man himself <clears throat> speaking to us that's not that's a son of man not the son of man that pillar of fire above him is, though. <laughs> and it's to vindicate the one that's below it. Amen. Amen. Only this message can do that. Only by hearing this message. And I'm so thankful that I have a revelation of that. It's against that, Brother Bram said, love one another. Don't speak against others. They have to do as they feel led to do. Sometimes I hear that, that it is, oh, bless God, if you're not listening to Branham Tabernacle and streaming, you can't be bright. Nonsense. Have I ever said that? Do you believe I believe that? I don't believe that. But I've told you it's a paradox. Do I wish everybody was streaming? You better believe I do. Not to hear me, hear this word, to be united around this word. But they have to do what they feel led of the Lord to do. The Lord's leading them. The Lord's the one that decided just us. I love how Brother Branham said the other day, this is for my church. We're his church. And the question is, it's like, can I listen to the tapes and be bride? I can. And I do. And it's this, I want to relax and sit back and hear that. To me, this is fresh manna. As he says today, if I can't find it here, I'll fly a little higher. I'll fly a little higher and higher and higher. I gotta have this word. This word is what feeds my soul. I like hearing the voice of God from God himself. And I believe that it is. It's the voice of God that recorded. So it is, well, the Bible's the absolute, mine too. And the prophet tells me what it says. I believe every word. He interprets it to me. 
and tells me. I wouldn't know what this Bible says or this Bible. I've been asked that very question. Well, sir, which Bible are you going to believe? There's this Bible, there's this Bible, there's this Bible, this, this Bible. Which one are we going to believe? We believe it's the King James Version is the closest because that's what the prophet said. Enough for me. So that's what we believe. But they have that question. We don't know. Brother Branham said he read it over here in the emphatic dialogue that's over here. And he said the emphatic dialogue said it this way, but King James said it this way, but this is the right way to say it. And if you take this word and it means that, oh, praise God. I don't have to worry. I just press play and praise the name of the Lord. Praise. Amen. Say, is Brother Joseph saying you shouldn't read the Bible? He said, a Christian reads their Bible every day. It's anointed. I hear it and God brings it and it's to life to us. And then you see it. It's like, oh my goodness, right there. That ties right into the message. That ties right into the message. And that It all ties in the message because it's all the message. Amen. It all points to one thing. In the beginning, it was the Alpha. Then it points to us, the Omega. The beginning and the end. We are the end. We are that original seed that's come through. As even if it expresses tonight, he didn't have spoken word. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Sorry. I just start talking about the word, there's just no end. Because it's life to us. But he even said, Mary said she took it in, said, At thy word, Lord, I, I do it. He says, But she was just a carrier. But the word came forth. We're impregnated by this word. And it can only produce. He said, whatever you plant is what will come up. You plant cabbages, you're going to get cabbages. You plant onions, you're going to get onions. He planted a bride himself to come again. And that's who we are. The bride is awakening. We've always known who we are, but now it's crystal clear. He's revealing more to us. We're understanding who that we are. We have no doubt no more. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. I know we ain't got no doubt. We ain't got no fear. We ain't got no sickness. Do you believe that? Oh, absolutely. Amen. Jehovah himself prayed for me and said, cast it out. Amen. So it's gone. It's his word. Now, if you doubt it, that's up to you. Not me. I believe every word. So I have no doubts. Satan pounds and pounds and pounds. He does, but he's just <laughs> wasting his breath. And I'm so glad to be identified with the bride of Jesus Christ. What an opportunity to have. Let us sing. Jesus, the name above all names, beautiful Savior. Anticipations, Lord, to hear your voice speak to us. We're so thankful, Lord, 
that you give us the revelation. Lord, you've anchored it so deep in our heart, and you just keep anchoring it deeper and deeper every day. And our faith, Lord, is getting stronger every day. And Lord, every day we're taking another step higher. And Lord, we're just walking out of here just like Enoch, Lord. You're doing something in your bride. You're changing us, Lord, from the inside out, Lord. That change is happening right now, Lord. And we're so happy, Lord, to be your children. Lord, just thinking about it, when we was hearing that tape, Lord, this week, about how there was a little girl full of cancer, nothing that could be done, Lord. And your prophet knew the condition, but Lord, he says, I never even touched her. He says, all I did was went to the pulpit and started preaching that word. And Lord, by the end of that service, that girl believed it and she walked out of that church completely well. Lord, your bride today around the world. Lord, under the anointing of this message in the voice of God, Lord, regardless of the conditions, whatever's wrong, Lord, it doesn't matter. If we'll believe it, Lord, we'll walk out of here completely well, completely delivered, fully, completely filled with your Holy Spirit, completely healed, ready, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord Jesus. You've made the way. It's your provided way, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord Jesus. And Lord, just we place these requests, Lord, before you, Lord. We know, Lord, there's nothing impossible with you. And Lord, we place them before you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for it. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your bride as she's gathered now around the world. We're under anticipations, Lord. We're under that anointing of the seventh angel messenger. Lord, ready to hear the voice of God. And Lord, you're speaking your bride into existence. You're bringing them into perfection, Lord. And Lord, there's nothing that can stand before her. We thank you for it, Lord Jesus. We love you with all of our heart. We don't know how to say it enough. We don't know how to say it the right way. But Lord, we know that we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And thank you again, Lord Jesus, for giving us this revelation of this word. We love you, Lord. Bless and be with your children now, and we commit it to you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Oh, Jesus, the name of Savior, Amen. glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer. this time we have a, a, a couple of baby dedications and if those families would just bring their baby up at this time as we sing bring them in amen bring them in bring them in bring them in from the fields of sin bring them in bring Daniel King. Hello there, Levi. Can you say hello to everybody? Levi Daniel King. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, what a token of love, little Levi, Lord. How we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. How we thank you for this family, Lord, that stands here today with their little family, Lord bringing their new little addition, little love token that you've placed into their home, Lord. And they want to come back, Lord, and they want to place him back into your hands, Lord. For Father, that they always know that, Lord, they can't always be there with him and watch over him, and they want to, Lord, and they want to protect him, but they can't always be there, Lord. 
So they want the very best for him, Lord. And that's to place him into your hands, Lord. Lord, for a life of service, Lord. And Lord, if there will be a tomorrow, Lord, may this message just burn with inside of his heart, Lord. May you bless and be with him all the days of his life. Lord, bless the family, Lord. May you always be the invited guest in their home, Lord. And may they always place this message first above all things. Amen. Now, Father, we take little Levi and we place him back into your hands for a life of service and dedication. We give him back to you. We ask in the precious and lovely name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Adam Carson Keller. Adam. Little Adam Carson. Ah, oh, got your tie on and everything. Oh, I think it's coming off. Let's bow our head. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you, Lord, for this little token, Lord, of you, Lord, another seed of Abraham, Lord, that we believe is coming to this world, Lord. And Father, the parents have brought him here, Lord, to place him back into your hands. That, Lord, they want to thank you for his life, Lord, and for placing him into their home, Lord. That, Father, you're the one that gives all the good gifts, and you know how to give them, Lord. You give us your word, Lord, and there's nothing greater than that. And then you place little love tokens like this in our homes, Lord. We just don't know how to thank you. But so, Lord, they brought him here today to place him into your hands so that you'll watch him, you'll protect him, that you'll be with him, Lord. May this message burn inside of his heart all the days of his life, Lord yes. Jesus. Father, may you bless this family, Lord. May you always be the invited guest in their home, Lord. May they place this word first before him, Lord. And Lord, may you use him, Lord, if there is that tomorrow, Lord, that his life will be a reflection of you, Jesus Christ living through him. Now, Father, we take him and we place him in your hands for a life of service and dedication. We ask it in that name that's above all names, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Thank Lord you. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the name. Oh, those little things. Avalyn Grace Olin. Avalyn? Little Avalyn. We finally got a girl. <laughs> Let us bow our heads. Lord Jesus, little Avalyn Grace, that Lord, how we thank you, Lord, for all your grace and your mercy, Lord. As I hold this little one in my hands, that Lord, how unworthy I am to be here on this day, Lord, to represent you. And as this family is brought up their little love token, Lord, to place her into your hands. I just pray that you'll be with her, Lord. Keep your hand up over and watch and protect her, Lord. And Father, this word, Lord, is everything, Lord. And Father, may these parents bring her up, Lord, in the admonition of this word and this message to love and to serve you, Lord. Father, keep your hand up over, Lord, in this wicked world that we live in. That, Lord, they know if they place her into your hands, that, Lord, they might not be with her, but you'll always be right there with her. Bless and be with her now as we take her, Lord. We place her into your hands for a life of service and dedication. Father, bless this family. May you be with them, Lord. May you always be the invited guest in their home as they raise their baby, Lord, to serve you. Grant it, Lord. We place her now in your hands in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm just so encouraged with what I heard this morning. This afternoon is more clearly and clearly who I am, who I get to be associated with, part of the bride of Jesus Christ. I can't wait to get into this message. Amen. As Brother Joseph was speaking and just thinking about the song that I had thought about and prayed about is teach me, Lord, to wait. I don't ever want to get in front of the Lord. I just want to be waiting on Him. 
whatever he wants me to do, that's what I want to do. Amen. Oh, teach me, Lord, to wait. Yes, now on my knees, till in your own good time. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we humbly bow before you, Lord, we just come to you in that all-sufficient name of the Lord Jesus Christ, just thanking you and praising you, Lord, for this privilege we have to come into your house, Lord, and how we enjoy gathering together with the saints of God, Lord, and hearing that word together and feasting upon that word, and Lord, we know the the day will come when this privilege should be taken away from us, Lord. But Lord, we're just so thankful to know that though we may not be able to gather like this, that you provided a way for us, Lord, that we're going to have this word, Lord, this spiritual food that you've given us, Lord. And Lord, we have it where we can hear it at any time, Lord, just with the push of a button, Lord, and that play button, and we can hear that voice of God in this end time. So thankful to live in the day of the voice, Lord, and that you permitted us to hear that word, to believe it, Lord. You've placed that word in our hearts. You've trained us, Lord. And you've trained us to know what our absolute is, Lord. And we're just so thankful for that absolute today that we can look to, Lord, and know that it's thus saith the Lord. And it's the ending of all arguments, Lord. And Lord, when there's a question, we can just look to that word and you have the answer for us, Lord. We're just so thankful to be a part of that, Lord. And just pray you be with us now in the remainder of this service, Lord. As that word comes forth today, that very voice of God, just may our hearts be prepared to receive it, Lord. And just place it there and manifest it in our lives, Lord. We pray that we would be a witness, a testimony for you, Lord. Now, Lord, as we come to this part of the service to receive the tithes and offerings, we just ask your blessings upon them, Lord. Is there use for your honor and glory? We only ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Teach me, Lord, to Are a-
are joint heirs with the Son, and we are people, yes, of His kingdom. Oh, we are family. We are one more time. We are heirs. Oh, we are heirs of the Father. Yes, we are joint heirs with the Son, and we are people full of His kingdom. Yes, we are family, we are one. We are washed, oh, we are washed, and we are sanctified. Oh, we are cleansed by His blood. were manifested to his bride in this last age and we have caught the revelation by our prophet's message and we know who we are and what we are raised up for praise the lord the original life the original life the original seed the spoken word is what i believe the son of man is revealed the seven seals is unveiled the original light the original seed we are the word made flesh today this is what the scriptures say and our names are seen within redeemed and perfect without sin yes we are anointed oh and inspired by our god the original the original The spoken word is what I believe. The Son of Man is revealed. The seven seals is unveiled. The original light, the original seed. Our eyes of understanding, He has opened up at last. And sweet victory is ours. Who were chained down in the past? True Jubilee has sounded and we have responded to our God. Amen. The original life, the original life, the original seed, the spoken word is what I believe. The Son of Man is revealed, the seven seals is unveiled. The original life, the original seed, we are called 
called unto adoption, full authority and power. Sleeping saints go awake and join us for translation in this hour. Gentile days will soon be over. Oh, glory, hallelujah to our God. The original life, the original life, the original life. The spoken word is what I believe. The Son of Man is filled. The seven seals is the veil. The original life, the original Third verse, our eyes of understanding, he has opened up at last. And sweet victory is ours, who were chained down in the past. True jubilee has sounded, and we have responded to our God. The original lie, the original lie, the original speech. The spoken word is what I believe, the Son of Man. The seven seed is a veil, the original lie. Just one more time, amen. Oh, original lie, the original seed, amen. The spoken word is what I believe. The Son of Man is revealed. The seven seal is a veil, the original lie, the original seed. special for our brother, Timmy Gary. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the star, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. And when I think that God, His Son, not sparing, Sent him to die. I scarce to take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing. away my sin then saints my soul my savior God to thee how great thou art how great now then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout 
of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow with humble and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art. Thank you, Brother Timmy. Truly, how great he is to us. Think of all that he's done, revelation he's given us, what we're about to listen to. Truly, we're so blessed. And for me, Lord, I just, I want all that I can get out of this message today. I want him to fill my cup till it's just running over and over and over. Just feed me. All that I can handle, just let me have all that you have in, in store for me today. Lord, just fill my cup, Lord. Oh, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord.
prepare to listen to bride food the manna of the Lord Jesus Christ that's been stored up so that the bride could eat it on this day we're sitting in the presence of the son of man speaking the word that is ripening the bride of Jesus Christ what a privilege it is for us to welcome back to this pulpit brother Branham our pastor God bless you brother Branham Things are possible. Oh, Let us remain standing for a moment of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, we deem this a great privilege tonight to be here uh, on this occasion to bring a living Christ to a dying world and a dying generation. We would ask, Lord, that you would anoint our words and our efforts, that they will not return to you void, but may they accomplish that which they are purposed for. Help every man, woman, boy, or girl here tonight that's needy. And Father, we know we're all needy. And when we leave tonight, may we feel in our hearts like those who came from Emmaus after the, had witnessed the resurrection of Christ, saying, Did not our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us along the way? Grant it, Lord. Heal the sick and the afflicted. May there not be any feeble among us after the service tonight. And above all things, may there not be one unbeliever left, Lord. May they all believe to eternal life, for that's our purpose of gathering here. These blessings we ask to the honor of the kingdom of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. You be seated. It's good tonight to be back here, and I see we got a few standing around, and I think the, the phones are open now uh, to many different cities across the nation, San Francisco, 
Tucson, up in the east, and we, through the telephone, send greetings to them. We're in the auditorium here tonight, and the main auditorium is packed out, and the aisles and around the walls are standing full of people. And we understand that tomorrow night we're going to try to open up another side here to the gym and get a larger auditorium that will take care of maybe a couple more thousand people. So we're hoping that tomorrow night, if it's filled up tonight, the first night, while well, we believe it'll be greater tomorrow night. And I see they set in extra chairs and everything also tonight. We're under great anticipations. First, the coming of the Lord Jesus. The next, the salvation of, to lost souls that would receive him tonight and be ready for his coming when he appears. I want to offer a special greeting and welcome to all these fine men on the platform, which I understand many of them are ministers, a couple of hundred or more sitting on the platform, and we are certainly thankful that they're here. To all you people, wherever you are, different parts of the nation, and I understand that some are here from across the sea, overseas. So we're grateful for you to be here, to enjoy this fellowship with us, which we're under anticipations that God is going to give us during this meeting. It seems like that since I thought of coming back for these few days of meeting, that my own heart has been alarmed strangely with a great feeling that something's just about to take place. I don't know just what it is, but I hope that it's a great revelation from God that will prepare us and make us better citizens of His kingdom while we're walking in this dark world of sin and unbelief. This ground tonight, this very spot, holds a great thing for me. Since I knew that they built this school auditorium here, I have wanted to have a service in this place. I'm very grateful to the school board and to those who graciously let us have it. It is upon this spot, right about somewhere where this building stands tonight, that a great thing took place some 30 years ago, right on this same ground. It was nothing but a broom sage field at that time. And I lived in a little house just beyond here, about 200 yards. I was very concerned in those days about the salvation of my father and mother which both are gone on tonight. And especially in that day, I was concerned about my father. I remember I was sleeping on the porch. It was warm summertime. This is written, I believe, in the little book called Jesus Christ the Same Yesterday, Today, and Forever. Or either it was in a little book called I Was Not Disobedient to the Heavenly Vision. And laying on the porch... I suddenly was awakened, and a burden come on my heart for my father. As many of you people here of the city knew my father, I think he was a great man, though he was a sinner, and but he had a bad habit that I've tried to fight against that thing as hard as I could through the age that's drinking. That night he was drinking, and I woke up with a great burden on my heart for him, and just with my pajamas on, slipped on my trousers, my pajama shirt left on, I wandered out through this broom sage field to just about where this stands now. And I knelt down to pray for my father. And while I was praying and asking God to save him, and not to, to let him die a sinner, that I loved him. And while I was in prayer, I raised up to look up towards the east from here, and there was a vision. And standing just above me, many of you know the vision, was the Lord Jesus. Now, I'm not allergic to illusions, as I know of, but visions are real. And there stood the Lord Jesus, the first time I'd ever saw him in a vision of that type. He was just about 
oh, probably ten feet above my head, standing in midair with one foot just making a step. He had on a white garment, a fringe around the side of it. He had hair down to his shoulders. He looked to be about a man, about what the Bible said he was, about 30, but a small, thin, built fellow. Very small. Looked like he would weigh over 130 pounds. And I looked and I thought there was something that I might uh, be wrong. So I, I rubbed my eyes and I looked up again and he was standing kind of sideways, kind of a profile of his face. And the looks of his face, which I've always seen in the visions, has been like Hoffman's head of Christ at 30. That's the reason I have that in my house, on my literature, wherever I can put that, because that's the way it looked, more like that, only he seemed to be small. And I, as I was looking up at him, I thought, surely I'm not looking at my Lord standing there, and I was kind of, I'd say, in this position, and maybe right where this, under where this pulpit sat now, somewhere right in this vicinity within with a radius of where I'm standing, the best I could measure off within 40 or 50 yards of somewhere around in this district here, this circle. And I looked up, and he was standing there. And I bit my finger to see if I was asleep. Uh, you know how you, it just seems like it couldn't be so. And I was just young in the Lord then, about six months I'd been preaching. And I bit my finger. I took a broom sage and broke it off and Many of you people who live in the country know what that little toothpick like is in the broom sage. I begin to chew on that. And I said, it, it can't be. I'm a dreaming. There's my home. There's father, mother, and the children there. There's the old brick house pond that used to stand down here where I used to hunt ducks just about 200 yards beyond this. And here I am standing in the field. It's got to be so. I kicked against the ground, stomped my feet a little bit, and shook my head and, and wrung my hands. Looked up again, looked away, looked again, and there he was standing there. And the wind started to blow, and I seen the broom sage blowing, and when it started blowing, his garments blew with it, like a clothes hanging on a line to begin to flip. Uh, he was standing there. I looked at it, and I thought if I could just get a look at his face. And he was watching east, right this way. He's watching it tensely. And I moved a step around to get a close look at his face, and I still couldn't see him very well. He had his hands in front of him, rather hid from where I was standing. I moved around again, and I cleared my throat, something like this, way, <clears throat> to see if I could attract his attention, but he never moved. Then I thought, maybe I'll call him. When I said, Jesus, he turned his head. And when he looked at me, he just raised his arms out, that's all I remember. For about a, nearly daylight, I was laying right out here somewhere where this place is now, in the field, my pajama shirt all wet with tears where I'd been crying and I had passed out. His face had characters that no artist could, could draw or paint. They could not do it. He looked like a man that if you would look at him, you wanted to cry with sympathy and respect with reverence, and yet with enough power that it would speak, it would turn the world over. And the characters could never be caught by an artist. And I never know to this day what that meant. But here I am tonight after 30 years, standing in an auditorium that's dedicated now to the service of Almighty God, and me just a, a lay member, really just a, a local elder in the and the Baptist church here, which Roy Davis was pastor at the time, and I am now standing here with a place crowded right over the same grounds with the, for what I think is the purchase of the blood of Jesus Christ himself in my hands to bring this four days message of the Lord. Just about six months after that, I had my first baptism down here on the river when the light came down right here at Spring Street. Many of you people might want to go down and take a look at it. at Spring Street and water right at the riverfront. And there's where the angel of the Lord appeared in public first. And uh, at two o'clock one afternoon, and a voice came from it, said, As John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ, 
your message will forerun the second coming. This is 30 years later, and here I am still tonight proclaiming that message. And around the world it's went. And I'm glad to be back in my hometown tonight to represent this Lord Jesus Christ that I still love with all my heart, and each day he grows still sweeter than he was the day before. I've never changed one iota in my doctrine. The first thing I started with, I still believe the same thing tonight. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I have a message that I'm responsible for. When the message first started out, it was, of course, everybody was praying for the sick. Great signs, wonders, and miracles that started, especially in the Pentecostal people, a universal revival of the healing campaigns that swept the world for 15 solid years. There's been revivals on every hill there is, I suppose. Revival fires are burning. Literally millions have accepted Christ as their Savior for that one commission that inspired from there to old Roberts and so forth and on and on as this went around. After the Pentecostal church was laying in its dead slump as it was then, my intentions and desire tonight is to awaken that church again to the coming of the Lord Jesus at hand. Amen. I have to rebuke it. I have to rebuke sin in whatever manner it is. I don't mean it to anybody's denomination. I have a message. Now, it's hard to get in a church for a sponsorship, just as it was with our Lord Jesus, because it's him, it isn't me. But as he preached at the first and healed the sick, raised the dead, and cleansed the lepers, and cast out devils, everybody wanted him. But there come a time where there's a message that always follows every sign, because the sign has a voice. But when he sat down one day and said, I and my Father are one, that was more than they could stand. It was also when he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. How, why doctors and well-thinking people would have said, this man's a human vampire trying to get you to eat his flesh and drink his blood. He never explained it. He just said it. And tonight you might hear things and through the meeting it's just said we might not be able to explain, but remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. We believe it. Now, we don't have time to talk too much because we've got certain times to start here and certain times to get out. And we want to honor the school board which set these times for us, and we'll do all we can to honor them. Remember, at any time a sinner wants to come to Christ, all you have to do is walk right up, whether I'm preaching, singing, whatever it is, and give your life to Christ right then to stand in your seat. That's what we're here for, to help you. I want to talk to Brother Vail, Brother uh, Robert, uh, Borders, and the brethren here. If I wonder if they couldn't have in the church in the afternoon or some morning or something instruction service for those who are seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Would that be all right, you brother, brother Neville and all of you could get there, Brother Kevin? If anybody wants to be instructed in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, why don't you come to the tabernacle? What would be best morning or afternoon? Morning about 10 o'clock? About 10 o'clock of a morning. If you got a question on the doctrine, if you got a question on the message, if you, if you want to be, if you never got ministered to personally, you want to be prayed for, or anything that you want to know in them matters, why don't you just sit down there at 10 o'clock uh, in the morning and see these men? There'll be one or more of them there to instruct, to pray for the sick, to answer questions. This is a personnel man, but you, you just uh, go to them, and they'll be glad to help you in any way they can. Now... Just before we approach the Word, we want to approach the author of the Word again. You might eat too much. You might drink too much. You might laugh too much. You might walk too much. But you'll never pray too much. I would that man pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without doubt or wrath. Let us pray. Dear Jesus author of the word of life, and you are that word. We solemnly now approach thee after the explaining of the vision that God, you bear me record that that is true. 
Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll anoint the words tonight to the hearing of every ear that's under the divine sound. And if there be some here or listening in out across the nation, if they are not ready and prepared at this hour to meet the challenge of the hour, the message from God, to repent and to be ready for the kingdom of God is nearing. We pray that it will be so tonight with them that they will meet this hour's challenge. Oh God, I would pray for help knowing the responsibility and what it means and what I must answer at the day of the judgment for all that I say here and elsewhere. Help me to be deadly, sincerely, Lord, with all that I do or say in thy word, that it might bring forth fruit. For as your commission was, let not this word depart from thy mouth, but meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that's written in the law, and then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and very courageous. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Lord Jesus, make it so tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friday and Saturday from 10 to 12 at the Tabernacle at 8th and Penn Street will be instructions, answers to doctrine, prayers for the sick, and what more. Come right down. If you have any question, anything you need, there will be man there to, to handle it. The Lord bless you. Now, for this opening service tonight, I can't do nothing but open it straight to our message. That's what we're here for. And now it's what I come back for. And... Sunday morning, the Lord willing, I want to meet that great challenge of the day about marriage and divorce. Now, in Galatians 4, 27, I wish to read these words, 4, 27 to 31 inclusive. For it is written, Rejoice thou bearing that bearest not, break forth and cry thou that travailest not. For the desolate has many more children than she which has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the Spirit, even so is it now. Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondswoman and her son. For the son of the bondswoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondswoman, but of the free. The Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Now, I believe here that I take a text like this, very odd, unusual, but... Sometimes we find God in those odd, unusual hours, unusual ways, unusual things, because God is unusual, and those that really serve Him from their heart serve Him in an unusual way to the things or the ways of the world. This text is called, The Seed is Not Heir with the Shuck. Paul here is speaking of the literal seed of Abraham's two sons. Paul gladly is bringing himself in the position of the birth by the free woman. Now, we know that Abraham had two sons by two different women. God gave him a promise by Sarah, through Sarah, rather, that there would be a son born, and through this son the world would be blessed. All nations would be blessed of this son. And it's commonly believed, especially amongst the Jews, that this was Isaac. But it wasn't. 
this promised son of Abraham is Jesus. And he is of the royal seed promise of Abraham. But Abraham having two sons, one by, by Hagar, which was his wife's maid, a lovely, pretty Egyptian maid that Abraham had picked up down in Egypt uh, for her to be her, his wife's maid. And Sarah, thinking that God would not be able to keep all of his promise true, she told Abraham to take Agar, her maid, and to marry her, which polygamy was legal in those days, and to bring the child. And that's the way God had it planned, that she was to have the child only through Agar. But we find out that that wasn't so. Now, we understand also that God is perfected in threes. Now, God is perfected in threes. Grace is five. Seven is completion, like the world. God is perfected in Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's the perfection of the Godhead. All one God in three manifestations of three attributes. One office, uh, three offices in the one Godhead. Now, there is also three in perfection of the steps of grace to the church. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. That consists of the new birth, just like a natural birth is tied to by it, which a woman giving birth to a child, the first thing comes forth is Water, blood, then life. The Bible said in 1 John 5, 7, or 7, 5, I believe it is, that said there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, which was the Son, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. There are three that bear witness in the earth, the Word, the water, blood, and Spirit. Water, blood, and Spirit. These three agree in one. Now, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one. You can't have the Father without having the Son. You can't have the Son without having the Holy Ghost. But you can be justified without being sanctified. You can be sanctified without being filled with the Holy Ghost. We prove that in the order of nature. Now, and many of you may be, I may be strange to you, and I, I'm without education. I'm sure you already understand, but I teach in types as a natural types of spiritual. Now we see that there are three in the perfection. God is perfected in threes. Now, and that was in the perfection of the seed of Abraham was Ishmael, Isaac, Jesus. Ishmael coming from the bond woman, Isaac coming from the free woman, and both of them with sex, but Christ Jesus coming from the virgin. No sex. Here the seed. One. One seed. Not seeds, but one seed. These others were not seed of Abraham because Abraham's seed was his faith seed that God was speaking of, not his natural seed. Because after Sarah died. Abraham married another woman and had seven sons besides daughters. So it wouldn't be Abraham's seeds. It was Abraham's seed, one. And that was Abraham's faith seed pointing to the royal seed that was to come through Abraham's faith. Not Abraham's natural life, but Abraham's spiritual life. Amen who took everything contrary to God's Word and called it as though it was not, and believed God against hope, believed in hope. That's the real seed that we're speaking of. Here we are presented with a picture of the seed started, the seed of promise started in a slightly doubted doubt of the original promise. See how it starts low? And doubt in the original promise. God promised Abraham through Sarah to have this child. But now watch. The first seed of Abraham by the bondswoman come by Sarah, doubting that this could happen. 
because she was old and past the age of bearing. Now, that's how the church starts. That's how it always starts. You start from the bottom. You don't start from the top. A man trying to climb a ladder tries to get on top first. He'll break his neck. You've got to start and build up to that. And here we find the beginning of the promise of God being made manifest through a slightly doubted, interrupted program of God. That's the same way sin began in the Garden of Eden. That's how death started by sin. was when one word of God was misconstrued or doubted. You can't doubt or misplace one word of God that's thus saith the Lord. Word be so. And here Sarah, even to who the promise, Sarah being a woman which is a type of the church, gave doubt to the original program of God's promised word and said, You, Abraham, my husband, take unto you this beautiful maid and live with her and be a husband to her and... God will give this seed a promise to her and I'll take the child. See? Just bypassing one little iota changed the whole program. Therefore, we've got to take every word of God as thus saith the Lord. Every word of God is true. Here the seed starts then in a promise slightly doubted. Isaac being the seed of the free and promised woman brought forth, as Paul was trying to explain here in Galatians, he brought forth the natural promise seed. And he goes on to say here that the, the bondswoman's children cannot be heir with the free woman's children because they are of two different categories. And that is true. The unbeliever cannot be heir with the believer. There's no way at all that's where the trouble is today. You can't make a denominational chicken believe with an eagle. You just can't do it. That's where the trouble comes. You've got to believe every word of God. You just, you're not heirs together, neither will you, will you join with it. You cannot do it. You've got to be eagle or chicken. It could not be heir with Ishmael, the seed of the bondswoman, of the, because of the doubting Sarah. Doubted. God's word that God was able to keep it. Notice, Abraham, you see what I'm building on for Sunday morning. Abraham did not doubt it. Sarah did doubt it. She was the one. It was not Adam that doubted. It was Eve that doubted. So, then we'll find out more about those as we pick it up Sunday morning. Neither can the spiritual be uh, the natural be heir with the spiritual. No more can Ishmael's children be heir with the with uh, Isaac's children, and no more than the carnal can be heir with the spiritual. Church natural, church spiritual. There is a church natural of these women here type, and there's a church spiritual also. So the natural church and the spiritual church cannot be heirs together. There are two different separate times, two different separate peoples under two different separate covenants. That's why the rapture is different and will only be for the royal seed of Abraham. It cannot come by the natural carnal seed of the church. It'll have to be the royal seed of the word of God uh, through Abraham, the royal seed. That's why the rapture has to be first. Of course, remember, we which are alive and remain shall not hinder, prevent those which are asleep. For the trumpet of God shall sound the dead, and Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them together to meet the Lord in the air. Notice, and again it's written, and the rest of the dead live not for a thousand years. Therefore, there, they will not be heirs together. They'll not be in the rapture together. There's absolutely a church natural and a church spiritual, a church carnal, a church spiritual. Now, see, here is no, there is no judgment to the royal spiritual predestinated seed of Abraham. Amen. Or they are predestinated eternal life. They have accepted God's provided sacrifice, and that sacrifice which is Christ the Word. 
And there is therefore now no condemnation. St. John 5.24, if you want the Scripture, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Romans 8.1 Walk not after the flesh, but the Spirit. In Romans 5.24 He that heareth my word, the word there is understandeth. Any drunkard or anything else can hear it and walk away. But he that Heareth my word, understandeth my word, and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into the judgment, but pass from Amen. death unto life. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. He that this great mystery of the God made known understands how that God was in Christ reconciling himself to the world, how that he and the Father were one. How that the great mysteries of the fulfilling of God taking and bringing Himself manifested in the age of human beings and in the strain of human beings and in the company of human beings to make His Word manifested in the day in the eastern rising of the sun and to do the same thing as the sun sets in the west to make Himself manifested in a bride church. A Word made manifest. It will... to. He that understandeth, that is to know, that's been revealed to him, of him that sent me, has everlasting life and will not come into the judgment, but's passed from death unto life. The natural seed was only a carrier of the spiritual the seed. Like the stalk, tassel, and shuck. We went through that before at another message, but I'd like to... Preview it a little later, or go back to it again just for a minute. Now here there is three stages of the seed shows us the true picture. The three stages of the natural seed in the earth. Like a seed is planted, brings forth a stalk, little blades, shoots from it, then the tassel, then the pollen hangs on that, and then the shuck, and then the seed again. What's these stages of this perfect parable here and how it works out exactly in the type because God is the author of all nature. Therefore, nature cannot fail no more than God can fail because He was the one who set the thing in its condition for, for us to look at and to see. Notice, Hagar, the stalk, which was the first beginning of the seed springing up. Now, it didn't look anything like the seed. It was a stalk because she was a bondswoman. Not in the promise at all. Nothing to do with the Word. Just a transporter of the seed. Notice, Sarah, the tassel, that had the pollen that Jewish nation raised from her. From time out of Sarah, brought Isaac through Isaac, brought Jacob. Jacob brought uh, the patriarchs, and through the patriarchs brought forth a nation. Mary, the virgins, faith, Produce the true spiritual seed, word made flesh. Amen. See? The three women. Three women that this seed was carried to. One of them was actually an adultery under polygamy. The second was a free woman, and the third one had no sex affair at all. Amen. But by faith, she believed the word of God. Amen. Hagar, Sarah, both Sarah and Hagar was sex, but Mary was virgin by the power of the promised Word of God. That's right. The stalk, Hagar, two wives, doubted the promise. But watch what that brought forth when Hagar, the second wife of Abraham, which was just a, absolutely a concubine wife, but she brought forth a man. But what kind of a man was he? The Bible said he was a wild man. He lived by his bow, and no man would conquer him. He's untamable, unconvertible, undegenerated. He could not be tamed. He was a wild man because he was of the contrary to God's Word in anything that's contrary to any preacher, any lay member, any church that's contrary to God's Word will bring forth a wild adulteress. A bunch of whirly Hollywood. It cannot stay with the unadulterated word because it's not even included in the promise. Amen. Oh, Sarah, the true wife of the promise, the being the tossed, brought forth a gentle man. 
in uh, returns brought forth a promised nation that served God. But Mary, by no sex at all, but believed the promised word Amen. when she was a virgin, knowing no man. And the angel of the Lord met her, said, Hail hey, Mary, blessed art thou amongst the women, Amen. for God is with thee. Amen. And she said, How will these things be? He, she said, The angel said, The Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. It had never been done in all the ages, but Mary believed God. And she said, Behold the hands made of the Lord. Amen. She believed the word. How is she going to have it? She knew that Hagar had the baby by a sex desire with Abraham. And Sarah had the baby by sex desire with Abraham. Children of promise. The bondswoman and the free woman. But here she's asked to believe. That's a contribution to the faith that was in Abraham. Who believes the impossibles as long as God said it so. Amen. That makes it right. Amen. She believed God. Hallelujah. Never questioned. She said, Behold the hands made of the Lord. No matter how much criticism I have to bear from the world, be it unto me according to the There come forth the genuine seed. Sarah could not do it because it was sex. That's right. And neither could Sarah because it was sex. Neither can the church under sectarianism. It takes a virgin belief in the Word of God that made the promise to bring forth children. Sectarianism will never bring forth the huge born church. It cannot do it. It will bring forth a substitutionary something. It will bring some, forth something that imitates it. Something that tries to be like it. But a genuine born again church of God believes the Word of God in the case of anything. Because... It's unadulterated. It's by the promise of God that these things come. Yes. Mary, the true one, said, by the outset, said, Be it unto me according to thy word. Behold, thy hands made. And she brought forth, what did she bring forth? Not a wild man, not a nation, but she brought forth the word. God himself made manifested in the flesh. Amen. The true seed of God that manifested every promise that God made in the Bible. Without Him, no man can live. Without Him, she was the true seed. She was beyond the. T she was the shuck that brought forth the grain. Now, the other two was carriers of life only as a natural seed. Mary. Now remember, I said the other two. Now Mary, don't make her God as some people try to make her. She was not a God. No, sir. She was only a carrier of the seed like the rest of them was. But like faith in the Word brings more to the real image. Like as the corn matures or the wheat, it comes forth a stalk. Then it comes forth a pollen. Then it comes forth a shuck. But when you think that shuck, if you don't watch, it'll look just exactly like the real wheat. But when it's opened up, the real wheat's on the inside. It's only a carrier again. So you see, Mary, not through sex, but through faith, something exactly like it, Mary was not that seed. Mary was a carrier of the seed. He was a genuine faith seed. Because the Word of God is by faith that He gave to Abraham, and only faith can produce what God said He'd do. Faith in His Word. Notice how uh, more like the real thing Mary was. But like the shuck, the shuck hugs a seed itself and protects it and nurtures it until it's standing alone mature. So has this third church age of Pentecost matured, holding the grain until it's time to open up the shuck. Mary, being the mother of Christ, just an incubator, he was no blood of Mary, he was no blood of Jew, he was no blood of Gentile, he was the blood of God. God created this blood. It could not be sex. He wasn't Jew nor Gentile. The baby is not one speck of the mother's blood. The blood comes from the father. Yes. We know the hemoglobin's in the male like a chicken. It can lay an egg. A hen can. But if she hasn't been with the male bird, the rooster, it'll never hatch. Amen. It's unfertile, though it looks exactly like a real fertile egg. Every nature of it looks the same, but it hasn't got the life in it. That's the way with people who profess Christ. Many of them look like Christians, try to act like Christians, 
But you've got to have Christ on the inside of you, which is the Word made manifest. Or it'll never mature into a real Bible-believing Christian. It'll always be a denominational something. It cannot live because there's no life in it to live. An egg cannot hatch. It rots right in the nest if it hasn't been with a, with a male bird. Just like members of a church. You can baby them and call them, make them deacons and everything else, but they'll, you have a nest full of rotten eggs unless they're mated with a mate. That's right. Carry it. The shuck. It nurtured it. That's right. Then it, that is the seed itself, has to leave the shuck. Or the shuck has to leave the seed to get the seed in the presence of the sun so it can be ripened. All in type, we see. See here now how close she, the church of this last days, gets to look like the seed itself. Look how this denomination of Pentecost that's raised up in the last days, and we'll explain it a little later on, see, how they come so close to looking just exactly like the seed. When a shuck comes forth out of a grain of wheat or a blade of wheat, after the pollen has fallen in there in the second stage and produced the third stage, which is the, the, the shuck. And how that, that, if you are not a real close observer, you'll never be able to tell but what that's a real grain of wheat in there. When that first little grain comes forth, looks like a grain. But you sit down and open it up and you'll find out there's no grain there at all. Amen. It's only a shuck, a carrier of the grain. Now, the grain comes forth from that, but remember, there is no more after that shuck. Remember, there was no more seed promised to a woman anywhere after Mary. And there's no more denominations promised after Pentecost. It's a rapturing bride coming forth from there. The seed, the Word made manifest again. Notice, see how close it looks. Matthew said, St. Matthew 24, 24 said that the two spirits in the last days, the church spirit of the church people and the bride spirit of the bride people would be so close together to it would deceive the very elected if it was possible. Amen. That's how it post. Look how it's come through the stall. Now notice, we're going to type something here. Luther, in the church age, of bringing forth the bride seed was the same in spirit just one little grain of seed Luther stood out on. That was justification by faith. Amen. He was the very type of Hagar, the stalk. Notice, Wesley was type of Sarah, the Philadelphia in the age of love, that brought forth the tassel. That in Wesley's age is more missionaries than any other age we've had. The great missionary age of John Wesley's time. But Pentecost represented Mary. Mary, the last stage of it, now, she was not the seed, Amen. yet the life of the seed was in her, yeah. Amen. but it hadn't matured yet. Amen. I feel very religious. Amen. It hadn't matured yet. It was there, but it wasn't matured. So is it with our Pentecostal age that we're living in. There's got to come forth of a word of God that's inner, undenominational, outside of the rims of that denomination. Amen. Luther went to husk with his first word, the just shall live by faith. Wesley had two words, sanctification, second definite work of grace. Pentecost had the third word, the restoration of the gifts. But the entire seed has to come forth. Yeah. See how they denominate on one word and another word and another word, but there's got to be something that cannot be denominated. Amen. It's the entirety of the Amen. life that's in there. It has to reduce itself again. Amen. All right. There cannot be any more church ages after this. We're at the end, brothers and sisters. We're here. We've arrived. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, we see these things are just as true as they can be. Still... We notice then if her being the tassel, or uh, Wesley being the tassel, Pentecost then being the shuck, which is the next stage of the coming forth of the grain. But brother, sister, the stalk is not the grain. Neither is the tassel the grain. Amen. Neither is the shuck the grain. Amen. So each time it matures, it looks more like the grain. Amen. The stalk don't look like the grain. Then what comes forth the tassel, a little bulb? It looks uh, more like the green than the, t than the blade does. What comes forth next? The shuck. It holds the green. It nurtures the green. 
Now look back here at the promise God made to Abraham. Of thy seed, speaking spiritually. Any of us know that. Amen. He's speaking of Christ, not Isaac. Amen. Through his faith seed. Notice, the first was by a bondswoman. Didn't look anything like the promise. God don't have to take back his word for nobody. Amen. God said how it would come, and that's where it'll come. Amen. But Sarah, being a representative of the church, type of the church, it, she found out there that she said, well, I believe this is a little too phenomenal. I just can't even believe in that. So you go get Hagar, and you take her for a wife. See, that stock didn't look like the promise at all. But when Sarah came forward, now, that looked pretty good. It looks a whole lot more like the promise there. But still, it wasn't a genuine promise because Israel and Isaac failed and denied the genuine seed when it came on. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't get excited. Don't run. That won't hurt you. Denied the seed, crucified him, and hung him on a cross. Amen. Just like Paul said here, did not the, the seed of the of the free woman, of the bondswoman, persecute the seed of the free woman. And so does the seed of the denomination persecute the genuine grain. It's always got to be that way. They're not be heirs together. They're not associated together. They're absolutely two different promises, two different times, two different peoples all together. One's a bride and the other's a church. No comparison at all with them. But still, they are not the seed that's promised to come. Neither was Sarah Neither was, uh, neither was Hagar, neither Sarah was, or, or neither Mary was the seed. Mary was not the seed. She was a carrier of the seed. But she had nurtured, brought forth out of her womb. Just like the shuck brought from its womb the real seed. But the shuck is not the seed. It only is closer to the seed. It's hugged up around the seed. Way back in the stalk, the life is scattered all through the stalk. And when it comes to the pollen, it's gathered down closer. But when it comes to the shuck, it's right down there like the seed. It forms it almost like the seed. Amen. Jesus told us what would be in the last days. Be so close to see the very elected, if possible. But then the seed comes forth from there, and the shuck, the life leaves the shuck. And the shuck is a carrier, and that's just exactly what our denominations has been, a carrier. Luther, Wesley, Pentecostals, and now it's time for the seed to come forth. Notice, notice, just she was not the seed, Mary was not. Just a shuck, tossel and stalk. Carriers a part of the word. Not all the word. Luther had justification. Wesley had sanctification. Pentecostals had the restoration of the gifts. But when the Word comes, now they can produce that, the justification will save a man. You believe that? Amen. Sure. It's the carrier of the Word. It seems I believe the stalk is part of the wheat. Sure it is. But it's the carrier. It ain't the life. Then long comes sanctification. How many believe in sanctification? You believe the Bible, you have to. Sure. So still, that's, not, that's a little more like, that's two more words. But then come the Pentecost, the restoration of the gifts. Speaking in tongues, they call it the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues. Now they call that... The initial evidence which brought forth the what? The shuck. Amen. But they denominated. But when you come to say, I and my father are one and these other things, then the shuck pulls away from it. Amen. But the real genuine bride church Amen. will bring forth the entire word of God in his fullness and in his strength. For he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Notice. In the wombs of Mary was the seed. But when the seed was delivered, it said, I come to do the will of him that sent me. I and my Father are one. If I do not his works, believe me not. There was the seed. Which one of you can condemn me of unbelief? What the Bible's promised I do, I've done it. God has verified that through me, he said. Who can tell me now? See, but the, the seed in Mary, the shuck, it was close to being that, but it wasn't. It was still in the womb. <clears throat> Notice, and in the Pentecostal age, through the Lutheran age, through the Western age, it's been the same thing to this Pentecostal age. Now look it. But at the opening of the seven seals, Amen. Revelations 10, the full word is to be born into manifestation again Amen. and vindicated by the Spirit of God Amen. in the full strength 
as it was when it was here on earth, manifested in the same way, doing the same things that it did when it was here on earth. Amen. 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 Hebrews 13, 8 said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday day and forever. In St. Luke 17, 30, Jesus said, In the last days as it was in the days of Sodom, when the Son of Man will be revealed in Himself again, it'll be the same thing. The world's in a Sodom condition, and the church has went into Sodom with it, like Lot and his wife. And I say that there is an elected church somewhere in this world that's thrown out and set aside from those things. And the manifestation of God has attracted its attention. We're at the last days. The shuck has given forth its strength into the seed. It's going on out. It was a good shuck, but it served its time. See, it is the word bride or the word groom. The natural seed of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob, and our natural seed, rather, of Ishmael, natural seed of Isaac, and so forth, had to go into the ground in order to, to bring out this other, bring out Jesus. And so has all these others. The seeds has to dry. And, I mean, the chucks has to dry, and the pollen has to dry, and everything dies so the seed can produce itself. Amen. That's the way it's been in every age. Denominations has been the carriers. Of part of it, part of that is the word, for it has been hid from the wise reformers or the sealed away from them until the age of the eagle is appear. The Bible said so. Amen. Yes, sir. Because we're promised that in Malachi 4. Amen. Exactly we are. Amen. He's hid it from the eyes of the wise and prudent. As we just went through the book of the Revelations, we find out that every, all three of those messengers of those beasts that went forth, each one suited Luther just right, each one seated the other just right, which is the oxen, the different animals of the Bible. It went forth to justification, sanctification, even into the Pentecostals, but the fourth was an eagle. Amen. That's right. And through that age, God raised it up. So it has to come through that age to be correct. Yes, sir, the eagle promise being fulfilled of, of Malachi 4. Jesus was not of Mary, but came through Mary. Like the life through the shop. Now, many of you find Catholic brothers here, sisters tonight, maybe think that Mary was mother of God, as you say she was. How could she be the mother of God and God had no beginning? No end. Right. Who was the father of God then, if she was the mother? He was her creator, Amen. and she was not his creator. Amen. He created himself in the womb of Mary, Amen. not her own creation. It was he created himself. He was not of her, but she was of him. Amen. That's right. The Bible teaches us that all things were made by Him. Amen. And not nothing was made but what was made by Him. Amen. So how could he, how did He have a mother <laughs> when He was God Himself? Now we see here the true revelation of the true type. There's three women carriers of the natural seed until they matured into Jesus. How Ishmael could not be because he was born really in what we think today, out of wedlock, because he was a bondswoman's son. Then come a little more like him, like Jesus, which come out Isaac. But it still wasn't because it was born to the sex between Sarah and Abraham. But then along came Mary by the virgin birth, produced Jesus Christ. That's right. God, the Word, made flesh. Now look, there were three women. There are three women typed here, churches. The women always types churches. means three denominational ages carriers, which also must die and dry up, just like the shuck and so forth does to give room for the seed. The seed cannot get right, cannot get ripe, brother, until the shuck stalk and leaves are all dry. Amen. That's right. It saps every bit of the life in them out. Amen. Amen. All of it was is that plus. Amen. Cannot do it. Now, it's seed time or bride time. The shucks are dead. The shucks are dried up. The virgin word time. Not touch. It's a virgin. Remember, a virgin word time. If you put it in the hands of a denomination, it sure won't be virgin. <laughs> It'll be manhandled by the time you get to it. But God's church is not 
touched by denomination. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a virgin born Amen. word of God made manifest. Amen. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. How, how wonderful. I love it. I believe it. I know that it's the truth. It will not be touched. There will be no denominational manhandling in the virgin birth of the bride. No, sir. She's, she's commanded by God to come out of such. Touch not their unclean things. They become vultures. This reminds me as I was coming from Phoenix the other day, coming to Tucson from the meeting. The Spirit of God called my attention to something as wife and I were going along talking and the children were sleeping in the back of the car, getting late, called my attention to a hawk. And I watched that hawk a little bit and studied him. He's a very type of the church today. Now the hawk, as we all know, has lost his identification of his original creation. That's exactly right. Once he was similar to an eagle, his greater brother, a hawk was. But now he doesn't fly in the skies no more to hunt his heavenly manna. But he has gotten soft. He don't fly in the skies anymore. He hops on the ground like a vulture. Amen. Sets up on a telephone post. Amen. Hops along hunting for dead rabbits. Yeah. The hawk wasn't made to do that. No, he was made to be as similar to an eagle. Now, that's just like the church. It was made similar to the eagle. It should take the place in the heavenlies. But instead of that, it's got soft. It don't fly into the unknown no more, into the blue. No, sir. It's depending on its modern ways of adoption, of education and theology in some man-made denomination. Looking for a bunch of dead rabbits half rotten that something else is. Hallelujah. Hopping along on the ground. That's right. A hawk. See, that's what tells. The eagle hasn't changed a bit. He stays the eagle. He doesn't soar into the sky as a hawk does anymore to catch his fresh manna up there. But he depends on what he can find already dead. A hawk don't know how stay supposed to get on the ground. But watch an old hawk today. Go down along the road. You see the telephone wire setting full of hawks. See if he can find something. Something's killed. Something rotten. Something. He's got so he hasn't got wings enough to fly. He's the first thing you know, he'll be on the ground altogether. Grounded because he's got soft. He don't use his strength the more. That God gave him his special identification was to sail into the skies and watch down from below. But now he gets down below and can't even look up. He's got his mind on dead rabbits to find out what he can find on the road. Some skunk possum or something somebody's run over. He's not an eagle, but he's something like it. Just like the church, depending on its food for education and so forth. A dead dyke that died years ago through Luther and Wesley and the Pentecostals and gone on. He's looking back for some man-made creed instead of flying up into the heavenlies of the Word where all things are possible to them that believe. He's tuck up the habits of the buzzard. Them dead things was left for the vultures, the world. Educations and so forth like that was left for the world, not for the church. He's so soft, he, don't, he ain't rugged no more. He can't get up into the rugged heavenlies where all things are possible to them that believe. He sits back and says, well, Dr. So-and-so said certain. My denomination don't believe it that way. Oh, you perverted hawk. <laughs> Afraid to break out upon the promises of God. You say, well, the days of miracles is past. You're soft. You're scared to take your wings of fire. Or have you come too soft for a prayer meeting? Have you come to a place that you're scared to stay over ten minutes at the altar? Amen. Hop along like a vulture, eating dead of carrion on the ground. Amen. Yes, sir. He's too soft to take the rugged beyonds anymore. Hops like a vulture and eats vultures food. <laughs> That's what it is. That's right. Amen. Until he's beginning to look like a vulture. He acts like a vulture. <laughs> He ain't no more a hawk than nothing. <laughs> He's more like a vulture than he is a hawk. A hawk's supposed to sail. Not sit on a telephone pole and watch for a dead rabbit. And then get out and pop up and down the road like a vulture. All right. See? That's just about the way the church has today. Amen. What's the use of going up there and sailing around when I get rabbits here? <laughs> but they're dead. Amen. They're rotten. They're contaminated. One time they were good. So was the doctrine of the Lutheran Wesleyan and the Pentecostals. 
Why you eat like a vulture? There was new manna found every night out of the heavenly part of the children of Israel as they journeyed. Anything left over was contaminated. We used to say the country got wiggle tails in it. There's too many of them wiggle tails in our experiences today. Our religions depending on what somebody else said, what somebody else did, and the promises for some other age. A man come to me not long ago, a Baptist preacher up there in my house, and said, you know, said, I just want to correct you on something. I said, why? He said, you're trying to teach an apostolic doctrine over in this age. He said, the apostolic age ceased. I said, when? <laughs> hmm? I'll tell you when it began, you tell me when it ceased. Amen. I said, you believe the word? He said, I do. I said, all right. Now, on the day of Pentecost, do you believe that's an apostolic age start? He said, I do. I said, then the speaker, Apostle Peter, said these words. And remember, Jesus said, whosoever shall take one word out of this or add one word to it, his part will be taken from the book of life. That's a preacher. Or somebody's got their name on the book. I said, Peter said, repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is to you and to your children and to them as far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. When did it go out then? It's always been in. It's a bunch of hawks that's turned out to be buzzards and hopping around on some other dead carcass. Some other age kill for them. Right. Not fresh manna from the heavens anymore. They don't want it. They, they can't have a prayer meeting. Not eagle to begin with. Soft. Not rugged. Just hops around. So is our modern denomination dependent on education. There's some man-made theology to explain all these things away. And they accept that. You won't take the word that said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You won't take Malachi 4. You won't take all these other promises pertaining to this day and said how the church age, how the prophet said it shall be light in the evening time. They don't take this. They want to hop around on what some Pentecostal organization killed a hundred years ago. Feeding on half rotten manna. That's right. It's no good. Notice, the church is so carnal. Feeds itself on worldly a Karen. Dead things of the world. It's like the vulture does. Church politics. They don't let the Holy Ghost send a man to a church. They have to have a politics and see if the denomination is going to receive him or not. That's right. They're like the world. They dress like the world. They look like the world. They act like the world. They're vultures like the world. They're lazy, soft compromisers. Amen. That's all there is to it. Do you ever see an eagle compromise? No, sir. There's no compromise in it. Did it as a genuine Christian? He ain't soft. He'll hunt till he finds it. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. He'll find his meat. He wants fresh manna. He'll get down there and dig till he finds it. He'll fly higher and higher. If it's not in this valley, he'll raise a little higher. The higher you go, the more you can see. So it's time for eagles of this day to get the flying higher. Dig into God's promise. Not live on vulture food. It's been... Killed years ago. Amen. Get out of it. Politics, voting in, voting out, saying this, that, the other, and the Holy Spirit has more right away in the church than nothing. No more prayer meetings. No more agonizing with God to fulfill His Word. No more believing that the Word is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. They just vulturized down, got a denomination, put their name on the book, got lazy and soft, and sat back there gloating on some kind of a dead of carrion. Amen. And then supposed to be at least a hawk. That's a similar brother to the eagle, the prophet that brought the true word and manifested it. Relies on half rotten man made theology. Amen. Where does he get it at? In some man made Sunday school program sheet. Amen. Some educator killed for him back in some seminary. <laughs> Tell him that the days of miracles has passed. There wasn't no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. No, this is nonsense. You mean to tell me that an eagle would eat that? He couldn't do it. No, no, no. no sir. Neither would a Christian eat on them dead occurrence from old denominational doctrines and things. They want the Word of God. Trust the promise of the hour. God promised rabbits in the days of Luther. He promised other things in the days of others. But now He promised us a full square meal. The full seven course menu for all the seven seals are open and everything is ready for the Word of God to go to you. 
hawks hopping like buzzards. No, man. Think of it. How critical, how, how the hour is. Just as a hawk has long lost its identification as a hawk, so has a church long lost her identification as a lesser bird brother of the eagle, God's prophet, wants the carrier of a true word, justification. Then they become a carrier of sanctification. Then they become a carrier of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, restoration of the gifts. But then when he goes on to keep going back and try to eat something manna from another day, it's rotten. It's no good. A genuine eagle of this day knows that was all right, but we got that plus. Until Jesus Christ is made manifest in the fullness of his power as he promised to be in this last day. She is now a dry shuck. It's past. The Spirit of God passed through her. It's true. And will not, she will not be heir with the vindicated seed word. She sure will not be. She'll not be in the rapture. She'll be a church member. It may come up in the second resurrection, be judged according to what she's heard. If you're here tonight and just a church member, what's your judgment going to be when we all have to stand there and witness you heard the truth? See, She no more flies into the blue, into the unknown, unto the supernatural, where the powers and heights and the promises of God's eternal word is made possible all things to them that believe. She won't believe that. She said, she falls right back on the telephone more and said, my denomination says the rabbits is all right. Though they got maggots in them, but yet they're all right, see. She depends on that. Pentecost is like her denominational vulture sister, sitting now in large council seats of the ungodly, certainly. Listening to her whirly politic head, feeding her own vulture food of dead rabbits of something that passed by 50 years ago. That's the condition of the Pentecostal church. Oh, my just as Sarah tried to bring the promise of the supernatural by a hand-picked hagger. So has the church trying to bring a revival. Our great evangelists across the country today, a revival in our time, a revival in our time, all you Methodists, Baptists, Pentecostals all get together. How can you have a revival of fresh manna on an old dead vulture? How can you have it? Revival in our time. The revival will be so small they never know it ever happened. Pentecostal said, oh, there's going to be a great thing happening. It's happening and they don't know it. Yeah. That's it. See? Yes, sir. Yeah. For where the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered. Yeah. Sure yeah. That's what it says. What is the carcass? The Word. He is the Word. The carcass, Christ. Christ in you. The same yesterday, today, and forever. How true it is. Sarah trying to get the promises all fulfilled, you see. In a great, like the church, they had a great revival in our time. By what? Uh, by a perverted promise. How are you going to do it when God never did bless an organization? He never did use an organization. When a message went forth and they organized, it died right there. I challenge any historian to show me where it ever raised again. It died right there and stayed right there. God just moved right on out of that carrier into another one. Right on out of the Lutheran into the Methodist, right on out of the Methodist into the Pentecostals. Now he's moved right out of the Pentecostals into the seed because it has to be the seed. You can't beat nature. There's no nothing else there for it to happen but the seed. So the seed will produce itself. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. The same pillar of fire showing the same science, the same Amen. power, the same God, the same Amen. miracles, the same thing. Vindicated the Word in the Bible just exactly. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's leading tonight. God help us to see it and believe it. Sure. See Sarah, the church, hand-picked Hagar. It didn't work, did it? No. Her hand-picked group won't work today either. Doctors and PhDs and LLDs don't do it. All the carriers fail. Luther failed us. Hagar did. What did Hagar do? Hagar gave her son to another woman's bosom. Amen. All right? Amen. To raise her child. Hagar did that. Gave her son, her only son, to another woman's bosom. Not his mother. Amen. To raise it. That's the same thing Luther did. When he gave his son justification over to a denomination of who was. Exactly. To raise him up. Amen. Wesley failed the same way as Sarah did. Doubting the supernatural birth being the baptism of the Holy Ghost as Sarah did at the oak tree. 
when Wesley was introduced to the supernatural, when the Pentecostal age come on, and Wesley was introduced to speaking in tongues, all this, they laughed and made fun of it. All you Church of Christ and you so-called and you Baptists and Presbyterians, every one of you turned your nose up on it and went away from it. Right. right. What'd you do? Wesley, you sold your child to an organization and it died and perished. It's exactly right. But the word, the true word, went right on. It didn't stay in that organization. It moved right on into Pentecost and took some more with it. It's a more matured son, like the seed that fell into the womb. And after a while, it started in the backbone. They didn't have lungs and had head and feet. And after a while, it come to a place that it was born. That's right. So that's how the church has matured the same way. Wesley doubted just exactly like Sarah did the tree. She said, when the angel of the Lord, a man dressed like an uh, angel, God, it was himself, Elohim. Dressed like a man, stood there with dust on his clothes and said that he had given the promise after Sarah was 90 years old and Abraham 100. And Sarah laughed up her sleeve and said, how could this be when Abraham and I haven't had, well, we haven't been as young people, family relationship maybe for 20 years. She's nearly 100 years old. So me have pleasure of my Lord, me old and him old too. And his stream of life is dead and my womb's dried up. My breast is gone. The milk veins are gone. How could I have it? God said, I promise it. Amen. He's coming anyhow. Amen. So did Wesley. How can we accept them speaking in tongues and divine healing and stuff? It's not for us in this day. God said, I promised in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He promised to do it. And he went on and done it anyhow. Amen. And the Wesleyan church with the, all of its little pollen sisters of Baptist Presbyterians and Church of Christ and Nazarene's Pilgrim Holiness and United Brethren and what for died right with it and the church moved on. Amen. Now, what did Pentecost do? Organize. It's just like the shuck. It done the same thing. It organized itself together. Set itself in as a shuck. That's right. Pentecost was as Mary. Pentecostal feast, look what Mary did. What did Mary do wrong? At a Pentecostal feast one time, she was faced with a bunch of dignitaries, priests, when her son, she couldn't find him anywhere. And she went back three days' journey. She'd left him, like the modern church today. About three times five, or 25, has a church left. About 50 years ago, or 75. No, left him at the Pentecostal feast. Mary went back up with Joseph three days looking for him. She'd been looking for him, couldn't find him. She found him. What did she find? She found him in the temple discussing the Word of God with the priest. And right in the front of those priests, those dignified, Mary let the curtain drop. Amen. She did exactly the thing she should not have done. Yes. Call her God, the mother of God. A mother ought to have more wisdom than her son. And she said, your father and I have sought you with tears for a day and night. <laughs> your father and I, claiming that the birth wasn't supernatural, that Joseph was the father of Jesus. She denied the supernatural birth. Amen. Pentecost took speaking in tongues. It denied the birth of the Word. That's exactly what it did. It'll take so much of it, but it won't take the rest of it. It denied the birth of the Word, just like Mary did. But watch! There will not be any more organizations after this. Watch the Word itself, yet 12 years old. Just a little bitty thing back in the shelf. He said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? The word corrected the church right there. What are you doing all these things for? You know you can't do this. We'll close up our doors. We won't let you come in. Boy, know ye not that I must be about my father's business. (laughs) Sir, sir, the true supernatural charm, she just claimed to be Joseph's son, a mere man, or what Pentecost did this claimed to be one of three. <laughs> I know that hurt. <laughs> one of three, but he was all three in one. <laughs> but the Pentecost, oh yes, he is the son of the father of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh my. But the real true word speaks right out and said there are not three of them, there's one of them. Amen. You know not the word of God? <laughs> not three of them, but one. Amen. Notice. There will be no more carrier mother churches, denominations after this carrier shuck. Because after shuck, there's no more, nothing left for them but just the grain. Is that right? Amen. It's got to be the grain. It's got to be the same kind it went into the ground. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. A spirit come up on the bride to do the same things that he did. 
See, it's a reproducing again of the grain. The word, yet young, spake for itself, and know not that I must be about my father's business. <laughs> There's the secret of the message now. Just exactly. The father's business. What is the father's business? Could you think of what the father's business was in him? To fulfill what Isaiah said, a virgin shall conceive. Fulfill what Isaiah said again, the lame shall leap like a heart. And all these things that take place. Uh, like Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet among you. Like that. I mean, it was the father's business to fulfill that word. Well, if that come down through them stalks of them natural women, what about these stalks of these spiritual church women? Churches means women. Women means churches, rather. Is that right? Then what is it now? We must be about the Father's business. The wheat would cry back the grain. Yes, sir. What was to do? Vindicate. Malachi 4. Vindicate. Luke 17, 30. Vindicate. Hebrews 13, 8. Vindicate. St. John 14, 12. Vindicate all of His Word. Vindicate Hebrews. I mean, Revelation is the 10th chapter of the opening of the seven seals and the mysteries of God, even to serpent seed and all, will be manifested. Marriage and divorce and all these other mysteries has been hid under the pillars for all these years from the theologians and so forth. Those days. Now they are. That's the Father's business. Think they would receive it? They want to be dignified and say, our denomination don't teach us that, but the Bible does. Right. God vindicates it to be true. Sure it is. Fulfilling this age when the seven seals are just proven the denominations have just been carriers. That's another one of the Father's business. To prove. And the Father's business now is to show you them denominations is not His. There are man-made systems that deny the Word. Right. Notice, you say, well, Mary, the very great virgin, at the cross, He never called her mother. He called her woman. Carrier, not mother. <laughs> True, she was a carrier of the Word, but she was not the Word. He was the Word. <laughs> oh, yes. Notice also, she was not identified in the resurrection with Him. He died and rose again because He was the Word. She was just a carrier. <laughs> she died and still in the grave. <laughs> That's right. So she was just a carrier, not His mother, not God. She was just a carrier like the churches are. That's right. So she was just a carrier, not the Word. Let's close the saying this. Oh, Pentecostal hawks. <laughs> Hopping around like vultures. Partaking of the world, just like the rest of them does. Amen. Having a form of godliness. Amen. Enough to deceive the very elected, if possible. Amen. But denying the power thereof, as says the prophet here. A perfect Example of what God's Word said it would be in the last days, a lady will see a church age. Amen. Naked, blind, miserable, poor, wretched, and don't know it. Amen. Claiming that she's big and wealthy, has need of nothing, and don't know that she's changed from a hawk, a similar brother, to a prophet to keep the Word of God straight. She's turned to a vulture and feeding her people on dead ecclesiastical rabbits. Exactly. Wake up! How do you expect to be identified or heirs with the eagles? <laughs> when such things as that, in this great hour, when the rapture is at hand. Oh, Christian, oh, believer, if you've been a partial believer... Keep on attending the meetings for just a little while, will you? We got something here I believe the Lord wants you to know. It's late. I can't go any further. I got to close. Maybe finish tomorrow night. But look, let us bow our heads just a moment. I don't want you to notice what grammar I use, but I want you to take heed just a minute to what I said. It's plain enough you could understand it, I'm sure, if you desire to. If you're here tonight, and you're without this experience, I don't say, you say, I've danced in the Spirit, jumped all around. Yeah, hawks do the same things like the crows and the vultures. I'm not asking that. What are you eating at home? Where are you getting your daily diet? Where are you feeding from the Word of God or some old carrion that's been used back in our years and years ago? 
Is your experience even tonight with something that you picked up many years ago, or is it fresh and new tonight, new manna that just fell from heaven, and you're feeding your soul on it, looking tomorrow for something good and better? If you're not that way, now with your heads bowed, your eyes closed, and your hearts bowed, ask yourself this sincere question. Not to me, but to God. Would you raise your hand in a testimony of saying this? God, condition my soul and my spirit that I can feed only on the Word of God. Would you just raise your hand and say, God bless you. God bless you. I don't know just exactly how many is in here this tonight. I'm a very poor judge of crown. But I'd say at least a third or more raise their hands. That they won't condition souls. Let us remember in prayer now as we bow our heads. Dear God, I'm only responsible for saying the word. And by these little simple parables, little types, the people see that one's not going to be heir with the other. And we know that in the last days there's going to be people that's going to be raptured up into the heavens. And some of them will be here when Jesus comes. And we're looking for him to come even tonight. And I'm thinking of 30, about 30 or 33 years ago, knelt here, maybe this time of night, long 9.30 or 10 o'clock, praying for a father that was lost. Tonight, Lord, I'm praying for many fathers, many mothers and brothers and sisters. Won't you have mercy, dear God? It's too late now for my father to do anything about it. He's passed beyond the boundaries of this life. And soon, Lord, we're all going to pass that way. I, too, must go that way. Every man and woman, boy or girl in here has to go that way. And we will be accountable for what we do with the Word of God. How little did that man seem in the sight of David when he was spitting upon him? How little will those people think to spit upon Jesus the Word when he returns again, those that pierced him? How little will the people feel who could walk away from here and see even, a, even not only in some great uh, Greek words and so forth, but in plain nature that teaches us God, the Creator, can see the carriers of the Word and see the Word itself and know the hour we're living and harvest time is here. Dear God, let us not turn our back upon it for some folly of the world, but let us tonight receive Him with all of our heart. Lord, create in me a good spirit, the spirit of life, that I might believe all thy words and accept Jesus, the word, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and believe today on the potion it's allotted to this age. Grant it, Lord. I ask it in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to ask each one of you, as you're here, and thinking of this real sincerely, we don't have a church for you, John. We have a pool down there to be baptized in. As many as believe was baptized. If you've never been baptized yet, but Christian baptism, that don't mean sprinkling, pouring, that means by immersing, not in a title of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Like the entire church was baptized until the Catholic Church in 303 introduced three gods and three forms of baptism in a trinity titles. If you haven't had that yet, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, there's robes and things waiting for you down there. Won't you come and join with Jesus Christ, not with us. We don't have a church even here to take care of you. Go to any church you want to, wherever you come from. But please, believe this word. Do you believe it? Say amen. 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 God bless you. May you do this. Anything we can help you, we're here to do it. Now, I know this is sick here. Our time's got away from us tonight for prayer line. Maybe we'll get it old. I want each one of you to do something for me. You're sitting close to somebody. Lay your hands over on that person. And no doubt, you're putting your hand upon an eagle. Maybe an eagle that has been eating some vulture food somewhere, gotten sick of it. They don't want it no more. They want to come out of it. They're sick and tired of it. Sit here tonight and see what eagles really can eat. The Word and have a living Christ living among them, showing himself alive. The same yesterday, today, and forever. They don't want to be heirs with the shucks. They're to be burned. All the straws and things is to be burned. The combine's coming to beat the wheat out. You want to be wheat. There's some of them that's sick. Some of them physically sick. 
I want you to pray, Eagle. Pray for your brother, sister Eagle there, as I pray for you here. May the Spirit of God come upon you. Remember, I'm giving you the food of the Eagle, the promise of God. He calls his prophets eagles. He calls himself an eagle. He's Jehovah Eagle. And while you have your hands laid upon one another, pray for them. Our Heavenly Father, your word said the last commission you give to your church was go into all the world and preach the gospel. The general orders. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If they should drink any deadly thing, it wouldn't hurt them. If they take up serpents, they'll not harm them. And if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. O oh, Jehovah Eagle, feed your little ones tonight upon that word, Lord. They're needy. That's the diet they need. That's what they need to know what the food is. What thus saith the Lord is. You promised if they laid their hands on one another that they would recover. Oh, Lord God, take all doubts and vulture ideas away from us now and we feed solemnly upon the eagle food of the Word of God. Let every unclean spirit that's in these people, every spirit of doubting, every spirit of fear, Every denominational clean, ever have it, ever sickness, ever disease that's among the people, leave in the name of Jesus Christ. May it come out of this group of people, and may they be free from this hour on, that they can eat the eagle food that we're believing you'll send us through the week, Lord, breaking open those seals and showing us those mysteries that's been hid since the foundation of the world, as you promised. They are yours, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All that believe and accept, stand to your feet. Say, I believe, I accept that what God promised me, I receive. The Lord bless you. That's wonderful. Every person standing, that's good. Of course, I love him. Let's sing this hymn to him, man. I love him, I love him because he first loved me. All together now. I I love him. If you do, let's raise our hands. I love him. He Shake hands with one another. Brother Eagle, just turn around. Sisters, shake hands as we sing it. I love him. Raise your hands again to him. That's how the world, see, 
God sees your faith, the world sees your action. Amen. Love one another now. Be kind to one another. Amen. Talk with one another. Be patient with one another. And any further instructions we can give, baptism, seeking the Holy Ghost, we don't have any room here to do that in. You understand. The altar call, if God's convinced you that this is right, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today, and forever, and you want to join with Him, go and be baptized in His name tomorrow. There'll be man there to instruct you. Anything that we can do to help you, we'll do it. Until tomorrow night, I give you Brother Neville, our pastor. today how great thou art Lord there's nothing like his word nothing like his presence the great prince of peace and today all of our troubles had vanished once again he told us all doubt all fear whatever you have need of he prayed the prayer of faith once again. The Son of Man pronounced it. It has to come to pass. He told us that we are that elected church that's been pulled out and set aside. That true virgin bride word. We are that original seed of God. Aren't you thankful for that today? There's nothing greater than that. Lord, we love you and we thank you, Lord. All your grace and mercy to be with us today. I'd like to call on our brother Craig McMasters to come forward as we bow our heads and close our eyes to dismiss us this afternoon. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just feel so little in your presence. Just 
What words can a mortal man say after what's been said, Lord? Amen. Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for storing up this food for us today. I want to thank you, Father, for the leadership that you provided for us today. We thank you for Brother Joseph, Lord. We thank you for the voice of God that kept and, Lord, protected this word, that kept it the way you spoke it, Lord, and didn't vary one bit from it, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you made it available for us, Lord, whenever we needed it, we wanted to, Lord. How we thank you for that, Lord. For that spoken word is indeed the original seed. And Father, we're seeing the fruits, Father, that what it's brought forth today. It's brought forth a people around the world that desire nothing but that virgin word. How we thank you for that, Lord. How we worship you, Father, that you allowed us to be a part of that, Lord. Bless each one of your little children here today, your little eagles, Lord. Father, if perhaps one of them didn't get what they needed, Lord, would you come down to a special yes. way, touch them, Father? Lord, meet the need on each heart, Lord. Father, as they go away from this building, Lord, may your presence be near. May the angels watch over them, Father, and protect them on their journey. And Heavenly Father, as we go, we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to be about our Father's business. That alone, Lord. Nothing else matters. We ask these blessings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about that name, oh, Master, say. Let all heaven and 
softly to him. Truly, there's something about that name. We love you today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, Lord. Thank you for calling out a bride, Lord, and letting us be a part of it. Thank you for your presence here today, Lord, as we feel you, Lord, knowing you're right here with us. Truly, as your prophet says, our hearts burn within us as you talk to us along the way, Lord. As our brother said, thank you for storing up this food, Lord, that we would have the pure, unadulterated word of God right at our fingertips to encourage us day in, day out. Every day it becomes more of a reality to your bride. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. May his sweet Holy Spirit just be with you. Pray that you're just bubbling over today. You got what you come for. Even more than you expected. Thank you, Lord. God bless you and be with you. Keeping that word day and night. You're dismissed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, as we continue just to hum it as you leave the building. God bless you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.